Well, welcome back to Lucor Automotive Services. Today I'm working on something completely different. A uh, little Chevette. Don't see those too often anymore. Let alone in like a early 80s genre with pearl white paint. Pretty cool little car. Got wheelie bars so it doesn't do backflips. Oh, water. Lightfoot here is in for some uh, suspension love. We're gonna try and dial in his front suspension and his steering geometry. Somebody just did a disc brake conversion to it and now it does all sorts of weird stuff. And uh, I'm gonna throw it on the alignment rack real quick. This car's actually been here for two weeks. Um, I had to special order some parts for it. Parts for a, you know, early 80s Chevette are not readily available. So I had to buy some uh, obsolete parts from TRW, and I was able to find them, but it took a while for them to get here. But they're all here. We're going to take it apart, put it all back together. If you want to see what we do with it, stick around. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Pay attention to how this thing comes up on the ramps on the alignment rack, too, because you're probably going to see a whole bunch of uh, steering movement when we hit the bump. <laughs> Show some action on this front suspension because it's all over the place. Towed in substantially on lift. to towed out on static. So major issues to resolve here. We're gonna start with all new bushings in the front end. So let's get after it. Releasing. Low control arm bushing. 
up the throw arm bushings. Allegedly. Hopefully. Rare parts. These are the caster rod bushings. Those were hard to come by. And they're old. And we're going to try some GMA body arms on it. Because instead of coming down to here, these come straight out. And I think that will give us better geometry on our tie rod ends. A new set of coils just for good measure. And that will rebuild everything on the front. Well, except for the lower ball joints. Destroy. Can't quite figure out how I'm gonna get those bushings out yet. Really good place to press on them. Hmm. The new ones don't have the outer casing. You might be wrong. Wrong bushing. Son of a it's supposed to be for this car. It's not. It's pretty frustrating. Thanks, Interweb. Yeah, it looks to have a metal casing it's similar to this one. I wonder if I could use one of these. Nope, different diameter. Thanks, GM. That's wearing me out. Two are done. I gotta figure out a real solution for these guys. That can prove difficult.
So the cross member is similar to a Fiero, but it's narrower. And the upper control arm bolt is the same as a Fiero. The upper control arm looks to be a little different. Um, and I think the lower control arm might be a little different, but it's it's very Fiero-esque. Um, but I got it. I got it to release the bolt, so I can. I've got the bolt moving, so I, I know I'll be able to get it out. I just got to keep it warm yeah, enough to it, yeah. release. But it's a good way to start the day. Smells <laughs> makes the place smell smell yummy. Great. It won't kill you quick. When it's warmed up, I doubt it. After one, after the starter, it'll be all right. After you put put a new starter on it. Almost made it out of the shop. He's gonna hate this car when he gets my bill. <laughs> now I know why nobody wanted to sell him bushings. <laughs> that would be work. I told you I'd win. Ooh, caster uh, spacer. We'll put that on the back side for more caster. Oh, it was trying to pull that bushing. It was trying to pull that inner liner out with it, so it was seized to the liner there and there. I don't know if heating it up through here, it probably heated the bolt so that it helped release it there and there. But if they, so these have the slots in them. Mm -hmm. So if we can find the slots and hit them like I did the other ones to sp spread them, that might help the other side come apart a little easier. So luckily for me, we did the hard side first. This side's actually rotating, but the front bushing is locked. All the inner sleeves are a rolled piece of steel, and they usually have a split down them. So when they're locked, I take a bit 
and I try and catch it and hit it and s separate this. Also, the vibration from the impact hammer going onto this can help knock the rust loose. So I think we've got the right spot here. I'm going to try and knock this bushing loose because this one actually spins over, which is pretty good. That's a good sign after the fight the other one put up, but I won. I always win. I might have several fails to get to the win, but I always win. split it still came out on the bolt that's fine this one was free so success moving forward I've already got my forward bushings installed my rear bushings are being a problem the bushings I ordered for it are incorrect so I'm actually gonna try and make an aluminum bushing for it which will be really rigid but it's a race car so it'll be fine and it's the only thing I can do in the next four hours because I'm leaving for a couple days and if I don't get this done today, it will be down for another weekend. So hopefully I can find a solution to get this thing aligned on the road. At least better than what it was. Sometimes that's all you can do is the best that you got it'll have to do. So we drilled out the bushings. I'm trying to get the rest of it out because I'm just going to use the original sleeves. We'll let those cool down and I'm going to go get some stuff from the metal store because I need an inner sleeve. And I need to check to see if my aluminum stock's the right size for me to just turn it down. Oh, those turned out perfect. Didn't think they were going to work for a minute. Those actually worked out perfectly, man. Yeah, I thought they did. I'm real happy with those. I guess when you don't have it available, you make it because it's your only choice. So the A body uh, steering arms look like they're going to work pretty good. I may even still need to raise them up a little more. We'll figure that out once we get it on the alignment rack. Um, I'm going to hang my rotors and I'm going to lube up my, uh, my slides on my calipers because they're really sticky. I like them to be loose. That way they release easier. Um, so yeah, let's get after it. I got, I got a lot to get done yet tonight and I would like to have this thing aligned or at least a preliminary alignment on it. So that I don't know what other parts I need to get coming for it. Um, but if I get a preliminary alignment on it today, and it's good enough, he, we can give it back to him. He can pay his bill for what we've done now. And uh, we can give him a plan for some next step things. And he can do that next. Um, that, was, that was a lot of work. Not going to lie. That was a lot of work. Oh, crying out loud. Thank <laughs> you. 
lug nuts everywhere. I think I've got everything sorted out as much as I can for the moment. So we're going to hang some wheels and tires back on this thing and we're going to put it on the alignment rack and we're going to see if we made it worse or if we made it better. I'm going to guess we made it better because it was, it was pretty bad. But that happens. You try something works great. You improve upon it. If you try something and it doesn't work, you take it all off and you do it again. I am very tired. It's been a long day. Big thanks to Stefan DiMatteo over at Trail Quest Jeep Parts for letting me use his big lathe and saw and other bits. Because he has a much nicer set of tools than I do. And he's nice enough to let me use it. Oh. Well, nice enough to let me use him. He's not going to let you use him. thing over to the alignment rack. That's the next step. We're going to see what, if any, improvements I make. Mm. My ride height sucks. I'm gonna guess those coils were so sagged out. Uh, let's let's drive it over there. We'll see what we can do. We may have to cut a coil out of the front, which isn't gonna happen tonight. <coughs> Looks like a gasser right now. Oh, that's better. A little better. Still too high. Have a fat guy sit on the front of the car, help out. That's about where it needs to be. Yeah, maybe they'll sag after it sits on it for a couple days. Always with new springs, you always want to let the weight of the car sit on it for a couple days before you start modifying coils. Um, but I'm probably going to have to cut at least a full coil out of this car.
straight. I don't know what straight is right now. That's pretty straight. It's interesting, the uh, camber is much better now that our lower control arm bushings are have a little bit of meat to them. Well, you can see just driving it around and back into the alignment rack, my front suspension has settled a little bit. Things have settled down a little bit. And it's actually at the perfect ride height, so don't jump to conclusions like I did, saying, hey, i got to jump and cut a coil out of my buy brand new coils. Drive it for a couple days, let everything settle in. Like, I don't even have the uh, upper control arm or the front lower control arm bolts tight yet, so I want to tighten those down at ride height. Um, so I will do those, I will actually lock those down here in a little bit, but it just helps everything get settled with all those new parts in there. Um, I need to hang the rest of my heads. <laughs> Holds better with the chocks out of the way. Yeah, I know. My total toe is a mess. Let's do a baseline setup, look at where it's at, and then we'll go from there. Cast readings are awkward. I don't know why that is. Let's get our toe squared up and figure that out. Got all sorts of weirdness going on. Let's start by centering our rack and setting our toe. Pretty dead on. We'll set our toe there. We'll worry about the steering wheel position later because we want our geometry right. It's more important than a straight steering wheel. The cameras are within three tenths of a degree, and as I recall, there's nothing I can do to adjust camber on this. They used to have, like the Fieros have an adjustable upper ball joint so that you can adjust camber. Caster's showing a weird reading, but I also had a weird comp because of the excessive toe, so maybe my caster will change after I put that, uh, put the toe back to square. Back thrust angle is under a tenth of a degree, so I'm happy with that. Let's make our uh, toe a reality. Well, the good news right now is I've got a joint here a joint here about an inch apart. I've got a joint here and a joint here and they're pretty close. Um, this may actually need to go up a little bit more for our proper bump steer but as it sits it's way better than what it was because before this was coming down to here and the bump steer was ridiculous. So we actually may be too high. Uh, no, we actually may still be too low. But that's okay. We're, uh, we're a far cry from where we were. Everything's looking pretty good. I may look into some adjustable camber ball joints um, for this to balance out the 0.3 degrees difference. But 0.3 degrees probably won't make a difference. More than likely he'll make some runs in this. And let me know what, how it acts and then we'll make some changes from there. But my rack position is so much better. And now my tie rod ends are much deeper so I've got better thread contact. Um, so let's raise this up, take a look at what the bump steer looks like now. It can't be anything but better. It's horrible before. So we've got toe in a Basically a tenth on lift. 
Toes in. A lot less than it did, but it's still towing in a lot. So, we've got it down to eight degrees of toe in on lift. So, I gotta figure out a creative way to solve that problem. Um, these rod ends very likely need to be on the top. Um, so we'll probably go to a through bolted adjustable bump steer kit. And if I have to machine the tops of it off to cut it down, then I can do that. But uh, that's not in the cards for today because I have things I have to go do that require me to be there. Um, but the toe's set, caster camber. I'm going to re-sweep it, check my toe and camber and caster again. For some reason, I have a lot more caster on this side than that side. And that's not something that's adjustable. there and our one washer there although that upper uh, the upper arms aren't tight so I'm gonna put it down to ride height tighten my upper arms because it looks like this arm is pushed forward pushed back sorry which would give me more caster so let me lock those down because that will affect it so I'll lock those down Resweep my comp. Our rack is in such a better position than what it was. This car really shows you uh, the effects of bump steer on lift. With the previous arms, exponentially so. Well, that's all the way down. So yeah, I guess I'm not worried about cutting the coil out of it. That's good news. It's a nice thing on this car, the, the uh, steering wheel is a disconnect steering wheel, but it's not master spline. So now that I have the rack all set up and squared to the car, I reclock the wheel and it's actually right where it needs to be. So very happy with that. That's a minor thing to overcome. My caster is still really high on my passenger's front. I'm going to have to figure out a solution to that. My camber actually got worse after tightening down the upper control arms. So I'm gonna figure out a problem to solution. Problem. Uh, I'm tired. So I'm gonna have to figure out a solution for that. It's still way better than when we started, so at least it's something. How am I going to fix my camber? Camber is actually easy to solve on this car. Because I can make the lower control arm forward position adjustable by making it slotted and using an eccentric cam bolt. I can push the push the forward position out, that's going to pivot me back, which is going to reduce my caster, which I don't want. Well, it's a step in the right direction. It's not perfect, but nothing really ever is. Um, 
I think I'm going to let him take it and give me feedback. I will think about how I want to solve caster and camber issues on this. Because at this point we are a half degree cross camber. We are two degrees cross caster. Everything else looks pretty good. My toe in I still have to solve. But we, uh, we made it a lot better. So it's not there yet. It's going to need more work. But that's race car, especially with stuff that's not designed for the car. <laughs> Well, I'm going to leave it there for now. I don't win them all. Sometimes uh, they're not where I want them to be. Um, where this is sitting right now is probably drivable. It's a lot better than it was. It balances out to a pretty good position. I'm not happy with the caster. And I would like to see the camber better. So this alignment is not one of the better ones. Okay, so we got a four tenths cross caster, uh, four tenths cross camber, like two and a half. Although you may not feel that in this car, I don't know. Um, we'll have to see what he feels with it. I'll just tell him to take some practice hits and go light to see what the car does, and then we'll go from there. Light flight coming at you. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Have a great day. Hmm. I've got an easy way to solve caster. I can do that by shimming the upper control arm forward or back. But the question is why is it so far off? That's the question. Have a great night, guys.